Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet, and uh, in this real flow for Cinema 4D tutorial, we're going to be looking at the mesher. Um, a lot of the tutorial, well, all of the tutorials before this point have all been about particles and the demons, so now we're going to actually look at meshing our particles. Uh, I warn you now that I will be going through, you know, making my colliders and uh, setting setting them up and actually building the colliders as well. So if you just want to um, uh, look at the actual mesher part, I suggest you skip forward. But um, for those that want to follow from the beginning, I'll, I'll be going through the, the whole lot. Um, so let's just jump in then. All right, first of all, all I've got here is a plane. I've got a, I've got a scene set up with, uh, you know, a camera, a couple of lights and that, which I've turned off for the time being. I've got a plane. Oh, excuse me. And it's uh, 400 by 400 centimetres, and I've got 20 segments uh, for width from height. <laughs> oh, God, excuse me. So I'm going to make this editable by selecting it and hitting C. And then I'm going to select all the polys by control a poly mode control a then I'm going to right click and go to my extrude to tool and extrude backwards, so down, and something like that. Now obviously we've got no uh, top there and that's because we need to click on create caps. So once we've done that we can um, go into the select tool and control A and you'll see all the polys, uh, all the normals are reversed, so we don't want that. So right click and we will go to reverse normals, now they're all facing the right way. <clears throat> so that's our floor dealt with and uh, let's just move on to building our other collision stuff first I think okay so I'm going to create another plane so let's go to our primitives plane and that's laying in the same kind of space there so let's just pull this up and I'm going to make this a meter by meter so 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters and it's got 20 segments, we don't need that, so just one will do. And, uh, okay, it's this above, far above the floor, we can uh, we can change that as we go along. I'm just going to put this white material that I've created on it, just so we can... Actually, I'll do that after, so we can see it properly. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to just make this editable. And, um, right, what do we want to do? Well, I'm going to go into point mode. And um, let's see, I'm going to select these two points here and just drag them back a bit, so, so about there. And then I'm going to grab these two points and just pull them up. So we've got something like this, like a, a little slope there. Then I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to select this edge here. And obviously you can see that our, uh, our uh, gimbal sort of facing in the in the local axis, so I'm going to go at the top and click this, so it's sort of global, and then I'm just going to control drag down, and then I'm going to control drag out this way. So we're sort of creating sort of steps. Um, so there's our first one. I'm just going to do that a few times. It's what we got there now. One, two, and I think we'll go for another one. Let's uh, just grab these two and and this actually, and drag them out a little bit more. There we go. Drag this one down. Maybe a little bit too far there. Drag this out. It's not the prettiest model in the world, but I think we can we can live with that. Okay, so we got sort of three steps there and at the end I'm just going to drag this out like this and uh, I think that should do us for the time being um, yeah that'll do us so okay I've created this shape then I'm going to um, control A and then I'm going to control click all these middle ones. So it's just these edges that we've got selected now. And I'm just going to uh, control drag these up so we've made some copies. Well, you know, and then do this. So we've kind of got like a bit of a weird shape there. And then I'm unselect that and then I'm going to go into poly mode and, and control A. So we've con uh, got all the polys selected now. And I'm just going to extrude 
out like so. Ah, now there is one thing that I did forget. So I'm just going to go back to a place when we've got all our edges selected. We need this top edge selected as well. So I'm just going to grab that. And then I'm going to do exactly what I did a minute ago with the um, with pulling this up. And then pull it forward a little bit like this. That's just to select uh, separate these edges that are overlapping here. If you can see what I mean. So just enough. And then, uh, yeah, do what I did before. Polygon mode, control A. Uh, right click extrude, extrude them out this way, just so we've got a solid shape. Now I'm sure you can all see that we've got our polys are reversed, so select all of them and then right click and reverse normals. And I just want to make sure that everything's um, welded, so I'm going to point mode. And the way we can do this is uh, actually if we go into uh, options at the top and then configure, um, and then filter, no, is it filter or view? I can't remember which one it is now, HUD. Okay, yeah, so here, if you go into HUD, you've got total points, total edges. So I'm just going to select total points and selected points. So there we go. It gives um, it gives the total points there, which is at 80. And if I control A, we've got the selected points as well, which is 80. And then when I go to optimize and press go, we can see that we were fine because they're still 80. But if that reduced, we'd know that there was points there that weren't welded. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so now we've got our shape. We're all we're in business. And what I'm going to do now is go to my select tool and hold on that and go to rectangle selection. And we've already got tolerance selection checked on and only select visible ed, uh, elements ticked off. So if I press uh, NG now, go into this mode and we can see all the edges behind that we couldn't before. Go into edge mode and if I select down the middle here, we can see that we've got all, all of these edges selected now, which is what we want. So we can go back to our other view by pressing NB. And um, what do I want to do? I want to right click, edge cut, we're going to take off create engons and we're going to hit apply. Now we can see we've got this single cut in the middle. I'm going to crank that up to two and I'm going to scale them outwards. Uh, I'm doing this just so we've got a little bit of, um, you know, it's not just this shape. We've got some interference in the middle. So now we've got that and we go back to my, um, oops, excuse me. I'm going to go back to my select tool and now I'm going to select down the middle of this lot here. So we've got all these selected and just check that we've got everything. Yep, we have. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So right click, uh, edge cut, apply, and we can scale these out to however big we want them. Something like that. That's fine. Excellent. Then I'm going to go into poly mode. I'm going to select this one down the bottom here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, extrude inner, just like this. And then I'm going to extrude up just so we've got a bit more of an interesting shape like that. And on these uh, steps here as well, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to grab these polys, uh, select, click for, my, for you know to add to, uh, selection, delete them. And then I'm going to grab these and I'm going to need to get that one. I'm going to, where are we, extrude. I don't think I need create caps on anymore. Yeah, extrude those out. I just wanted to make sure that inside here, I didn't create. Um, so if you go out here, that's what I just extruded out. And if we had create caps on, I think inside, yeah, it blocks this hole up and you, you get like a non-manifold edges and um, complex poles, which we don't want. So if you want to know more about those things, you can check out my uh, Patreon only tutorials. I'm doing a modeling series at the moment. Um, so now we drag these out. I'm just going to pull them out a little bit more actually. Just select them and just pull them towards this. I'm going to leave a little gap so I can weld. And then I'm going to go to point mode, right click, weld. 
and I want to weld this point to this point and but to do that uh, you can usually you know select both of these go to weld and then you can choose either the center or well click off and it will go to the center of these two points or you can choose a point but you can also uh, go to your weld tool if you hold control and then drag this point to this point they'll weld so just make sure you hold control and you'll be absolutely fine so control pull one point to another point it's a lot like the um stitch and sew tool in that respect okay and then i'm going to go back to my poly uh poly mode and select these two and i'm going to extrude up just so we've got something a little bit more interesting and there we have it that is going to be my collision shape just to make things a bit more interesting I'll apply this material go back to object mode and uh, I think that'll do us mm, I'm just looking at the bottom here maybe we could um, go back into poly mode and uh, UL well that gives a ring selection probably not not the one that I wanted oh well, it does actually yeah um, okay I'm just going to select this poly here and all the ones along the bottom. Just make sure I didn't get anything underneath. Nope. And I'm just going to pull this out slightly just so we've got a little bit more wiggle room. And that's it. That's that's going to be my collider. So I suppose now uh, we need to think about getting our real flow scene in. I'm just going to name this as well. Okay. Uh, Lider object, I'm just going to call that, and let's call this floor. Okay, good. Right, what next then? Real flow, as normal, go up to our real flow. I'm just going to go into emitter and choose circle, and that will create our real flow uh, scene tree. And um, I actually just want to adjust this emitter a little bit so instead of it being you know this size that it normally is I don't know if you can see that there um, I'm gonna go into my emitter go to object and I'm going to make this 20 by 20 um, 20 by 20 centimeters so now we've got something that's like this and uh, I think I'm just gonna drag this up a little bit uh, maybe center my object as well. So I'm just going to go into my side view here and uh, grab my collider object and I'm just going to move it so it's a little bit more sort of central. I think that'll do us nicely. And go back to our scene. And with our emitter, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to rotate it slightly so it's actually looking at our... Scene like that. Okay, so let's just press play and give it a whirl. Okay, it's shooting out. There doesn't appear to be very many particles, and that is because I've changed the emitter size. Uh, I think before it was 100 by 100, I think. Let's just put that back, and obviously at that size, you get a lot more particles. But um, at 20 by 20, obviously not as much, because it doesn't cover the same surface area but we'll deal with that in a minute first of all we need uh, some forces in our scene well let's sort our colliders out first shall we let's deal with the floor first because it's the easiest so the floor selected i'm going to right click on it and go to real flow tags and go to collider and in here um i'm going to go to display and show collision geometry uh, rewind to the start and there we go we've got a collision geometry there it's not the prettiest but I think for the purposes of this that might actually do so let's actually um, play this and you know our stuff's hitting it that's you know it's doing a doing a pretty good job yeah I'd say that's fine okay so let's uh, <clears throat> let's leave that as it as it is then we don't need to worry about that. Although, 
just in case you did want to get this a little bit more perfect. Um, if you're using RealFlow 1.0, uh, you can, there's probably a tab in here, well, there is a tab in here that will let you adjust the volume and stuff like that. Whereas in 2.0, which is what I'm using, it's been separated out into a separate uh, tag. So you have to right click real flow and then go to this volume tag and everything's set to auto in this. The collision geometry detail is medium. We can probably live with that. But the cell size is 10 um, and it's set to solid inside, which I do want. There we go, something like that. That might be a little bit better. But maybe less whack this surface offset is zero, which is good. Yep. And domain offset is zero. Okay, that's good. You can see there's something happening at the bottom where it's not quite right. But that really doesn't matter because um, our particles aren't going to be hitting the bottom. They're hitting the top and then we're going to kill them anyway. So, so that's this floor dealt with. We can turn off the collision geometry now. And uh, we want to deal with our other object, which is this. So again, I'm going to right click, go to real flow, collider. I'm going to turn on the show collision geometry and rewind and press play. That's actually not too bad. That's looking pretty good. Um, but we may want to sort of hone this in a little bit more. So I'm going to right click on this again and add my volume tag. And we've got geometry details medium. That's pretty good. The cell size is 10. I'm going to turn that off. Okay. So it wasn't 10. It was obviously some kind of auto. There we go. So they've, they've got it set to 1.4. Surface offset. Let's make this 1. So it's a little bit more close to the surface. That's actually not half bad, that. The domain offset is zero, that's good. And the volume mode shell, but I don't want that. I'm gonna solid inside it. And we can see now that, you know, we're getting collisions. Um, something that I usually do that I didn't do this time and I apologize is go to just set up my scene a little bit. I'm gonna go to scene. I'm gonna go to the solver page and then say use GPU and I'm gonna choose my GeForce GTX 970. I'm also going to go to um, the fluid and go to display and just crank up the particle size so you guys can see them a little bit easier. There you go. Now I'm just going to go into the side view and this is just to make sure that there's nothing escaping or getting through the collision geometry because if that's happening um, you probably need to adjust the cell size um, <clears throat> And, or if that doesn't help, uh, you want to go to your scene, go to your solver, and these auto params to turn this off, and then you can choose your uh, min substeps and max substeps, substeps even. Crank those up, or double them at a time until the problem goes away, and uh, that should that should do the trick for you. Okay, so back into back into this view again, and uh, I'm going to turn off my. Let's have a look. Surface of a bit, but yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to turn off the show collision collision geometry now, and there you go. You can see the particles all uh, doing this, and obviously it's a little bit weird, and that's because we've got no gravity in the scene. So let's do that. Let's go up to the real flow menu, demons, and gravity. We'll add that in. The default settings are fine. That's Earth's gravity. And let's give it another go. And there we go, we're getting something a little bit more na natural now. Okay. So maybe I want to grab my emitter and maybe just turn it this way a little bit more, maybe. Something like that. Maybe bring it closer. Like this. Okay, that should do us. Right, now the amount of particles. Obviously, when this emitter was bigger... Oh, excuse the sound of my chair. God damn it. Um, yeah, when, uh, 
when the emitter was bigger, we obviously had more particles, but we can actually control this inside of the fluid. So, uh, fluid, actually it will be fluid. So fluid, fluid tag, and we've got this resolution here. So if I crank this up to say 10, we should get some more particles coming in now. And you'll actually see that we had a particle escape. Yeah, a couple of particles escape here. So let's go into our side view and see what happened there. Yeah, I don't think the time step was enough. So to fix that, let's go to our scene. Let's go to our solver and turn off auto parameters and change these to maybe three and three and see if that fixes our problem. Yeah, no more escaping particles. Great. Now, there's a few things that we are probably going to need to do to make our mesh look half decent. So first of all, the resolution's a big, big one. It's going to need to be higher, a lot higher than this. Otherwise, you're going to be left with a mesh that looks very globby and not very natural. And also the type of solver as well. So if we go into our fluid and go to the fluid tab, we can see that we've got this liquid P... BD, which is very quick solving. In fact, let's have a look at the help. Quick. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so the P -P uh, PBD is very fast. Fluid type, faster than liquid SPH. So it's just fast. But this is a little bit slower, but it's way more accurate. So now I've changed it to that. Let's have a look what happens. Oh, what's going on? That's not very good, is it? They're going all over the shop. And there's probably a good reason for that. Um, let's have a look at the settings for this then. So we've got the type uh, SPH, which is what we want. Um, and you can see this viscosity value. It says three. Now this is actually the viscosity value for water for this solver. So we're, we're going to leave it at, at that. That's absolutely fine. And um, I've got a feeling that the reason these particles are going all over the shop, in fact, let's add a load more resolution. Actually, let's fix this before we do that. Um, so select our scene, go to the solver. Uh, let's select auto params actually and just see what happens. Well, there we go. The auto params have actually sorted out our issue for us. And as long as there's no particles escaping, I can, can't see why that would be an issue. Well, there we go. So that's fine. Uh, the min sub steps is one and the max is 300 for this solver. And if you're still having problems, what you could do is take off this and actually crank up your min, minimum sub steps until the problem goes away. Um, and you may need to crank up the max, but I, I doubt it. I should imagine it's this number here that you're going to need to um, crank up and maybe these by one or two. So <clears throat> the auto parameters seem to be fine for this. So back to our mesh, we got rid of that problem now. So this this is looking good. But to get a like I said, to get a mesh that doesn't look bad, we're gonna need a lot more resolution in our fluid. So let's go back to the fluid. We've got a resolution of 10. Let's crank this up to 100. See what happens. Oh yes, there we go. We've got a lot more going on now and you can start to see the scene slow down for me in fact because I'm recording at the same time I'm just going to save this scene just in case we get any problems I can come back <clears throat> so yeah we get a little bit more accurate because we've got more resolution in our fluid it just means the particles are closer together and, th and therefore more of them needs to be produced um, so I'm actually going to crank this number up again to 200 and we'll see what we get now. Okay, brilliant. We're getting a lot more. Now, I actually want to kill the particles that are being created that are sliding off the bottom here. So I'm going to create a kill volume. So let's go back to the beginning and go up to the real flow, go to demons and go to K volume. So we get this box around it. So I'm going to go into my... Um, side view here and I'm just gonna select the K volume 
go to the fall off and we've got can you see this red fall off in the middle i'm just going to take that all the way to zero so as soon as they leave this outer bound they get killed off so there we go i'm just going to raise this up so anything outside of this gets killed and i'm just going to make sure that we are very careful to include the emitter because if we don't they'll be emitted and killed instantly as you can see here when we play so we need our emitter inside of this volume and uh yeah i think something like that will do a treat so anything outside of that now dies so if we play you can see the particles being killed now as they rush off the end there which is great so we just need to do this for the other direction this way so if we get any rogue particles flying off to the side they get killed off as well so if we go back here we've now got this and we don't need to see this uh, demon sort of cage in our uh, in our scene so we can actually just hide that by doing this and the same with the gravity actually we don't need to see that so let's have a look at what we've got it should run quicker now because we haven't got you know generated particles falling forever okay great great stuff Now, we could actually affect the speed of the emitter as well. So if we select the emitter and uh, go to the emission, we can see it's set at 200. If I, I lower this to 100 now. Um, do, 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 do. Um, what do we get? Well, it's definitely a lot slower. Do you know what? I think I was happier with 200. So let, I'm just going to leave it at that, I think. At the emitter speed. Yeah, and I think I'm going to animate the emitter as well. So let's do, let's just do something quick. Um, I'm just going to animate it left and right. So I'm going to go into my top view and change this to ground shading lines. So we can see here this is the inside of that top bit there. And I'm going to so my emitter is selected. I'm at zero. I'm going to key it there, and I'm going to move it. I don't know by about one third maybe. I've got five seconds on my clock here, so I'm just going to move it this way and then key it. And then I'm going to move it up to about here and move it all the way to the other side. So it has a little bit of a speed up there, really, and then key it. And then I just want it to go back to where it was originally. So if I select this key and then hold uh, control and drag, I make a copy of that key and I can dump it at the end of my timeline. And it'll go back there. So it goes up there, goes down there, and goes back to the beginning. Great. Let's go back into this view. Give it a little play, see what it looks like. So it just adds a little bit of variation into the animation. Not much, but adds a little bit of interest. Now, I actually want to deal with the surfaces of our... I don't think the plane actually needs to be bothered with because, yeah, the particles never get to the plane. But obviously there's interaction going on here. So I just want to have a look at the collision tag for this object. So Collider Object, we'll go to the uh, collision tag for it and go to Properties. Now we've got our friction value here. Now, it depends on what kind of material this is made from. What's this twirl down? So you can actually control friction by texture, but we're just going to do it for the overall stuff. So if we said this was made of like plaster or something like that, I'd say there's be quite a bit of friction on there. So I'm just going to crank this up to 0 0.01 maybe and see what kind of result we get. Okay. That may be a bit too high maybe. I actually quite like that though, that's very cool. But it's given us a very uniform flow and um, that'll be very easy to uh, get a good result with, I think. And uh, I kind of want to create a scene that may have problems so I can show you how we can maybe get out of them. So I'm just going to half that amount. Hmm. They are spreading out a little bit too much, so... What if, what if I do half? Okay, so yeah. 
Let's go back to the beginning again. That's not a bad amount, actually. Okay, so yeah, 0 0.008. Got a bit of friction going on there now. Is that reaching the floor? Oh, we are reaching the floor now. Okay. Interesting. I think there's a lot of particles, maybe. Are they dying? Yeah, I think they're dying. Okay, that's fine. I can live with that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm happy with the um, amount of friction there. Bounce, it doesn't look like it's too much of an issue. Obviously, you know, if we were saying this was plaster, there wouldn't be a lot of black bounce going on there. So maybe we could lower this to point two and see if we get a bit of a difference. Now you're probably thinking, why aren't we talking about the measure? And this is all to do with it. It's all going to have a um, impact on what our mesh looks like, especially when it comes to the resolution of these particles. So I think I'm happy with the collision now. So let's leave that alone. And let's go back to our fluid and our resolution's at 200. Now I could actually crank this up even more to get a little bit of a better result. Let's do it. Let's do this. So let's crank this up to 300. The more the merrier when it comes to our particles, I think. Let's go even bigger. Let's go 400. And I think I'll leave that there now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we don't need to worry about anything else in here. This density value, that's the same as um, water. Um, so we can leave that as it is. So we can pretend this is water. Okay, so let's cache this particle animation. Let's go to the scene. Let's go to cache. And let's cache simulation. Let's do it. So it's building the cache. Um, these cache builds may take longer and longer as we go through the tu uh, tutorial and I crank up settings and whatnot. So um, I probably will cut these out the next time you've got one of these, just so you don't have to sit there and painfully watch it. Nearly done now anyway. Okay, good. So let's go back to the beginning and let's have a look at the flow of this. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I like that. Very nice. Good. Okay, so now we can move on to our measure. So let's go to real flow, measure, and just click on it. And it'll add it here. And it'll be selected as well. So we've got a few options. And I think the, um, the one we're interested in is the mesh for the time being. So let's have a look. Let's, uh, in fact, that particle, oh, what's going on here? Huh, yeah, that might be for a previous scene I've got there. So let's clear that out. Let's go to scene, cache, remove cache, and remove cache folder. So we've got rid of the whole thing. We're gonna have to cache our particles again. Um, so let's just cache the simulation there then. Okay, we're back. So I recached the simulation and it actually cached the mesh as well, I think. So let's have a look at it. And this is the mesh's default settings. Let's go to display ground shading and let's give this mesh a um, nice material. Now, look at that. I mean, if you wanted something like paint or something very thick, maybe, maybe that may be the look you're going for, but not for me, when you, you know, if we actually come out of this camera and go into the, you know, very blocky here. And if we actually look at the mesh resolution, it's not particularly high, it's very low, but we do get a smooth result. But like I said, it's very globby and um, I'm not sure that's what we want. So I'm just gonna take this display mode off. 
not very good at all. And uh, I see a lot of this online, actually. Um, fluids that look uh, very gloopy or very kind of like metabol-y. So let's go into our measure. Let's have a look at some of the options we've got. Right, the resolution's low. We'll come back to that. Um, the radius is currently set to 8 centimeters, so that's the radius around each um, uh, particle. So I want to lower this, so I'm going to lower this to maybe 2, a bit extreme I know, and then I'm going to build the mesh for this frame. And now you can see that we've got something a little bit more closer to the particles itself. And as a result of that you can see that we're getting some blobs up here. So it's very it's kind of blobby, a bit sort of goopy in that. Um, but again, I'm going to build the cache for this just so we can get a get a look at what the whole thing looks like because obviously this is the old animation that's been cached there. So I'm going to go back into my scene and I'm going to cache meshes. Okay, so we're back. Um, and if I rewind this and play it, now, I'd say that's a lot better than it was before, but we are getting this gloopiness and uh, all of that kind of stuff. So let's have a look at how we can combat this. So let's get it to a frame where we've got plenty of fluid in the scene and maybe some interesting shapes. And go back to our measure. Now, we can see the resolution is low. So let's put this to low medium and then press, press build mesh again and it will just build it for this frame. Now, that blobbiness looks like it's got worse, to be honest. But in regions like this, we're going to need that extra detail. If I put this back to low and press Build Mesh, sure, it looks like it's been smoothed out a bit, but let's go and have a look at this up here. Do you know what I mean? It's very blocky, like one poly there, one poly there. Let's have a look at the dis change the display. So there's not enough geometry to describe this curve, if you like. So I'm going to put it back to low medium and build again. And we can see that that's been smoothed out quite a bit. Now if we go to just medium and build the mesh, it's been smoothed out a lot. So that may be something that we want to entertain. But if we go back to this shading mode, and um, we can see that it's really, really blobby now. So maybe we might want to whack this radius up to maybe three centimeters to combat that. And that does help, but it fills in all those like gaps and that detail we had. So I'm going to put this back to two and we're going to have a look at another way that we can get around this. Well, underneath radius, we've got this smooth um, value. So I'm going to crank this up to five and build the mesh. And we're getting a r rid of a lot of that up there. Now, because it's a balancing act between these values, I'm actually going to... Let's crank this up to 9 and see what effect it has. Smooths it out even more, but we're still getting this kind of stuff over here. So, I think I'm just going to start off with a value of 2. And I'm going to go through our other bits and bobs and see if that helps. Okay, we've got this thinning value down the bottom. Now, I'm going to crank that up to about 0.5 and build mesh. And it's actually, it kind of makes our fluid a little bit thinner. It kind of tames it down a little bit. And then we've got this re relax value as well. So I'm going to crank that up to 0.5 and see what that does for us. Not great. Maybe crank it up a little bit more. 0.75. That did help. But now these two are up. Let's uh, crank the smooth up and just keep going until we get a result that's not half bad. Let's go back up to eight. Build mesh. Now because of, you notice these little bits haven't been filled in now and it's because of this stuff that we um, fooled around with. I'm half tempted to bring my resolution down to low medium just so, and that has smoothed it out. That has smoothed it out a lot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna build this out um, that was the old simulation, don't be scared. I'm going to build this out again by going to Scene, Cache, and I'm going to cache our meshes again. Okay, so we're back. It's done. So let's rewind back to the beginning. You can actually see the uh, particles in this scene, and it's kind of distracting. So I'm just going to go to the um, emitter and hide it. 
Uh, it's not the emitter, is it? What am I... Is it the fluid? Yeah, there we go. So it's hidden the particles now. So actually, that's not too bad. I mean, we are still getting a few gloops and globs here, but um, that's actually not a bad mesh. That's pretty smooth. And in fact, it's probably good for me to talk about the mesher and what these things actually do. I didn't really give a good description of them. Um, so the, the radius is... Uh, The radius is obviously the radius around the particle um, that the mesh is generated. So it's kind of like the so size of the spheres that gets generated around them. And as the spheres intersect, they um, sort of create the surface of the mesh. Uh, the smooth value, basically smoothing out the surface of the mesh. That's all it does. But it does close holes in the fluid or removes unwanted patterns. So you can, you know, you can use that to do that as well. Uh, the thinning... Uh, it's a filter basically it's an easy uh, to use method to improve the mesh's overall quality valid values between uh, 0 and 1 ok the um, the relax uh, this type stretches and sharpens the mesh's edges and gives you a much more natural look uh, valid values range between 0 no thinning and 1 maximum um, in the help they, just, they actually recommend values between 0.1 and 0.3 and I've uh, I've cranked that bad boy right up. So let's try 0.3 and see. That didn't make too much of a difference, to be honest. Um, and obviously the relax iterations is how many times this value is sort of iterated. Um, I actually like that up there. It didn't really... Yeah, I actually quite like that. So... That's quite natural. I'm quite a fan of that. So let's have a look at the channels. And there's not too much to talk about in here. It's all about the mesh tab, really. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there with that. Now, we could actually improve this by quite a lot. And that is to do with the particles. So I'm going to turn the mesh off and just untick it. And uh, obviously you can see nothing's playing now, and it's because I've hidden my fluid. But if I turn it back on, I mean, there's a lot of particles there. It looks like there's enough. But I'm actually going just to, just to show you guys, the resolution's at 4,000 at the, uh, sorry, 400 at the moment. And I'm going to more than double this by cranking it up to 1,000. And I'm going to go to my scene, and I'm going to actually remove the cache. Uh, remove cache folder, 302 files, yep. And I'm going to cache the entire simulation again, including the mesh, actually. Um, yeah, okay, it's figuring it out on the fly now. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to recache the whole lot. And, uh, excuse me. I'm going to recache the whole lot. And uh, I'll see you in a sec. So let's do that. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, that took quite a little bit longer, that did, uh, which is no surprise. So I'm going to hide the fluid so we don't see our particles. And we just got our mesh in the scene. So let's have a look. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. That's very good. You can see it's a lot smoother up here now because of the, um, because of the amount of particles in there. In fact, let's turn off our mesh for a minute and actually turn our fluids back on. And you can see that there's a lot more there now. So to mesh over this is going to be a lot more accurate. Hence why we get a better better result. Let's turn off our particles again. So what I might do is actually render this out so you can see like a final product and try and give the uh, fluid some translucency. In fact, let's save our result now. So we've got that. And... Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much just sort of like an overview of the mesher. Um, there's some other things we can do actually to get our fluid looking even better, which don't involve the mesher, which I'll be covering in other tutorials. So um, I hope this has uh, been helpful for you guys. 
in terms of um, you know this quick overview. As always, you can check out my website at digitalmeet.uk. There you can vote for the upcoming tutorials if you want another real flow one or if you you know i'll put a list of them up that you can vote on there's usually about four or five so go there to do that uh yeah you you do have to be a digital meet mem member so it just stops the polls from getting spammed and stuff so you can go there and do that uh social media links will be in the description so you can follow me on facebook twitter and google plus and um there'll be a link to my patreon in the description and at the end of the video as well so if you want to get access to my patreon only content you can go there and do that okay cheers for listening guys see you next time bye